Hey, what's up guys? Next update. Today I'll be taking off my top hand, splitting the case. So um, I'll just kind of try and uh, time lapse that. So uh, yeah, I started with the covers and left and right sides for the secondary power valves. This one had a lot of gunk behind it. So I had to hit it with a screwdriver to break it loose. Then I'm undoing the retaining clip that holds the cap in. That's the cap they use to adjust the tension on your primary power valve. There's a little spring in there. Uh, now I'm doing the right side secondary uh, power valve. It's nice and clean in there. Yeah, you gotta disconnect that plastic clip that holds the power valve shaft. Now I'm just removing the little lever that attaches to the main shaft. And there's a little retainer. I'm mostly using drill for everything because I'm not tightening anything. Now there's a spring and a little spacer that sits below the lever. Now I'm removing the front cover to get access to the main power valve. There's a lot of gunk in there as well. Before I can pull out the main power valve, I have to undo these caps for the secondary power valves. Because there's a little pin that connects, connects the main power valve to the secondary power valves. <laughs> that was so dirty in there. Bam, cap is off. Now you gotta undo this little tiny bolt that keeps the main power valve attached to the shaft so as the shaft rotates it picks the power valve up and down now you gotta slide out the shaft came out kind of hard but i had to use yeah this method to get it out yeah i cleaned everything up afterwards now there's like a little metal guide that sits over the top of the main power valve so it doesn't kind of slide left and right. It was a little bit of a pain in the butt to get it out, but, and everything is so dirty in there. Now I'm pulling out the secondary power valve. There's just the bearing and the valve itself. Yeah. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the right side. Just the bearing and the valve. So once you get that out, you'll be able to pull out your main power valve and that's what it looks like, pretty dirty. Now I'm uh, taking off the dome of the cylinder head. There's a bunch of those nuts and copper washers. Bam, it's off. And I took Ziploc bags and I organized everything into Ziploc bags. It was so helpful. Yeah, now you gotta undo those four nuts that hold the cylinder head to the case. And that nut that I'm working on right now was such a pain in the butt to get to. Barely in your room. And I finally removed the cylinder head. Great. Now you have access to your piston. Yeah, get the gasket out of there. Then remove the wrist pin and the cylinder. And there's a couple of circlips that hold the wrist pin in place. So you just remove one side and that's it. I'm just gonna see if the bearing, how was the bearing in there and stuff. Yeah, now I'm just removing all the gear shifter, gear shifter shaft, and I'll be removing all the gear shifting mechanism 
the shifter cam. There's a bunch of little parts. It's not too complicated. That's why I filmed everything. So once I, I go, I can go back and see how things were put together. So yeah, you'll find two springs, two couple of tiny pins and yeah, make sure you kind of keep track of all that stuff and put it in Ziploc bags. Now I'm removing the idler gear. That's for the Kickstarter. And another plastic clip for the main power valve shaft. And now the actuator for the primary power valve. There's a little bearing in there and all these little bolts are set in uh, like blue Loctite. So it takes some effort to actually undo them. And you can see the blue, blue Loctite. I took the water pump circuit clip in the washer. I didn't have to, I could have done it after I split the case, but I just did it. Yeah, now removing the last of the shift cam of the shift cam then there's that little spring loaded arm that keeps the tension on the shift cam okay yeah spring now i took off the sprocket and i'm now finally removing all the bolts for the case there's a bunch of them and i'm just using drill for all of them nice so i ordered the case splitter of from amazon and it took three weeks to get to my house so and i wanted to get this job done i ended up just doing it manually using a screwdriver and a flat bar and a mallet i don't know if i'm hitting the transmission shaft and i'm hitting the crank shaft uh and that kind of breaks loose the shafts of the bearings because it's fitted on there and don't do it too hard not to damage the case kind of go easy don't put too much force but yeah after about 20 25 minutes i was able to split the case and yeah this kind of time lapse of me messing with it i cut a lot of it out i was just i kept rotating it checking the gap kept hitting it and it slowly by surely started coming apart Definitely doable without a case splitter. You don't need a case splitter to split it. And there she goes. You see my transmission. All of my transmission is in the right case and my crank assembly is in the left case, which is totally fine. It's not a big deal. Oh yeah, actually half of my transmission is in left and half of my transmission is in the right. There I'm trying to get the rest of my tranny out of the left case. I'll also have a video of me thoroughly going through the transmission and you can see how everything is put together. Now I'm trying to get the crank assembly out of there. It's out now, I'm gonna take it to the shop and have them rebuild it for me, put a new connecting rod on there and a new bearing since it's already out. Here's the crank assembly. I'm gonna take it to a shop and have them rebuild it for me. And here's the blown main bearing. As you can see, I had particles like this all over my engine. Today, my goal was to split the case and extract the um, crank assembly, and I was able to do that. Uh, it took me a couple of hours because I didn't have the case splitter. I ordered that on Amazon, but it never came in, so. <laughs> okay guys this is the end of part two i hope this was uh, helpful and interesting to watch i'm showing how i'm taking the cylinder head off taking apart the power valve splitting the case 
I'll, I'll do part three where I'm showing how I'm thoroughly going through the transmission, all the gears. If you have the same model bike, this might be helpful to you. And in part four, I'll be showing how I'm assembling the engine back together, starting from the bottom end and working my way up. And yeah, stay tuned, share, like, subscribe, uh, comment. I would appreciate all of that stuff. Thanks, till later. Thank you.